Okay, in this uh, final screencast of guide sheet number five, we will be practicing calculating slopes of position time graphs. Uh, this little PSYW simply means please show your work. Uh, anytime you make a calculation, uh, especially when you're looking to get full credit for it, you're going to need to show uh, how you got to the end product, not just the final end product. Uh, now we're talking about a position time graph, so this is x. The distance between two points would be delta x. Uh, and then on this axis we have time. The distance between two points would be delta t. And the slope would therefore be delta x over delta t, which is our definition of velocity. So rate of change of position is velocity, and that is the slope of the graph. Now to calculate the slope, I need any two points, and then I'll need to figure out the delta x, the rise, divided by the delta t, the run, for that particular, those particular two points. Uh, and this first one, I'm going to pick this point and this point. This is a nice point because that's 0, 0. I like this point because it's up here at the end, it's easy to see, it's 20 meters and 5 seconds. Okay, now it's always initial, uh, final values minus initial values. So on this graph, this is the final point that I have. This is the initial point. So I'm going to take uh, x final minus x initial, and I'm going to divide that by time final minus time initial, and I'm going to take 20 meters minus uh, 0 meters. Okay, so it's this part minus this part. And then I'm going to take 5 seconds minus 0 seconds. 5 seconds minus 0 seconds. Now, subtracting away 0 is no real effect. So that's 20 meters over 5 seconds. 20 divided by 5 is 4. It's positive. So my velocity in this case is positive 4 meters for every second that I travel. Okay, so that's how we calculate it, and that's what it means. It tells us how fast. So if I were to look at the graph, after moving one second, I should have moved 4 meters, and sure enough, that's what it tells me. After two seconds, I should have moved 8 meters, and that's what it tells me. And notice that it's constant, so 3 seconds, I'm up here at 12 meters. So I'm always moving the same distance in the same time. Uh, if I were to use the motion diagram to show that, I would be moving, uh, start here, and then I'd be here one second later, and then here one second later, and then here one second later, and then about here one second later, and then finally up here about one second later. So if I look at the gap between each motion map picture, it would be four meters. Okay, uh, now in the next one, we're going to figure out the slope again. Now this is a little different. Our starting position is not 0, 0. But I'll still pick that point at 0 time, 0 seconds, I'm at 5 meters of position. And I'll pick this one here too, just because that's where the arrow is. It's easy to see. That's supposed to be 25 meters and uh, 5 seconds. Those are my two points. Uh, my slope is going to be my velocity. It's going to be delta x divided by delta t. That's going to be uh, 25 meters in the x. This is my final. This is my final position. Uh, this was my initial position. Minus 5 meters uh, divided by uh, 5 seconds minus 0 seconds. Now, 25 minus 5 is 20, and 5 minus 0 is 5, so I get the same um, 4 meters per second in the positive direction that I got before. So the, really the difference between this graph and the other graph is my initial starting point is not at 0 meters, it's at 5. Uh, but then from that point on, I would move at... Uh, with a speed of 4 meters per second.
Okay, now uh, it's final minus initial, so when we're taking a difference of delta, it's always the final value minus the initial. So you can end up with negative values when you calculate a slope. So here are two situations where that happens. Uh, in this one, this is my initial point, and that's 25 meters and zero seconds. Then I'll take this point as my last point. Now that's five um, seconds, but zero meters. So when I'm going for the velocity, it's again delta x over delta t. That means it's going to be the final, and this is my final value, uh, value of x, which is actually zero, minus the initial value of x, which is 25. I'm going to divide that by the final speed uh, time, which is 5 seconds, minus the initial time, which is 0 seconds. Now, time is something that in the Newtonian universe does not go backwards. So you shouldn't expect uh, negative times to occur. If you're getting a negative time, then most likely the math is going to rise somewhere. It shouldn't really occur. Uh, now, this time, 25 divided by 5. But the difference is it's negative 25 meters divided by uh, 5 seconds. So we get a negative 5 meters per second. Now, what that means is we're starting up here, and we're moving into the negative direction. So for every second that I travel, I cover five meters. But I'm not going up the graph. I'm going down the graph into what we would assume was the negative direction. Now, in general, we assume up is positive, down is negative. We don't always have to do that. There will be situations where we want to flip that. Uh, but right now, we're doing up is positive, down is negative. OK, and our last one, here's our initial position. And that's uh, 25 meters again and 0 seconds, same as we had last time. Uh, but this time, we're ending up here where the arrow is. So that's uh, 5 meters at 5 seconds. Our uh, <coughs> velocity is going to be delta x over delta t. Our final um, position this time is 5 minus our initial position, which is 25. We're going to divide that by our final time, minus 0, which is our initial time. Uh, 5 minus 25 is negative 20 meters. And 5 minus 0 is 5 seconds. So notice we're going to positive time again, as is to be expected. That makes our velocity for this trip negative 4 meters per second. So we're moving again down the graph, but this time we're only moving 4 meters for every second. So we don't quite get all the way to 0 like we did in our first one. We're uh, moving a little slower. This uh, slope is not quite as steep. Now notice in this case, steeper, this is steeper, this is shallower in the negative direction. Okay, so that's how you calculate slopes. Slopes are useful. They're useful in a lot of things we do. They're extremely useful when you're trying to figure out the velocity from a position time graph or the acceleration from a velocity time graph, uh, which we'll be doing later on. Alright, that wraps up uh, what we can get from PT, position versus time graphs. Uh, gets us a long way along with our study of one-dimensional motion.